coming up. The tough economic times continue. Full details of the Chancellor's £25 billion cuts. The relentless bad weather continues too. We'll have the latest on who is affected and where. And back down to earth, Prince William studying agriculture at Cambridge. 2014, the year of hard truths, the Chancellor's New Year message. Part of George Osborne's speech has already caused a clash within the coalition, but with the election next year, he's sticking to his plan. We can give up, go back to square one, risk everything, or we can confront the hard truth that more difficult decisions are needed. Also this lunchtime, no let up, the relentless rain and strong winds still battering Britain. The call for a single inquiry into who knew what about Jimmy Savile. And from the forces to the fields, Prince William prepares to study agriculture at Cambridge. This is ITV News with Nina Hussain. Good afternoon. If you were hoping for an upbeat New Year message from the Chancellor, you'll be disappointed. George Osborne says 2014 is the year of hard truths. Those truths are £25 billion worth of cuts to public spending after the election next year. But the plan's already put the Conservative on a collision course with his coalition partner Nick Clegg, the Liberal Democrat Deputy Prime Minister. He says the Chancellor is targeting the working age poor by planning to scrap housing benefit for the under-25s. And that is a monumental mistake. Our political correspondent Libby Vina has more. Trying his hand on the production line at a Birmingham car parts factory, the Chancellor seemed in good spirits. But his New Year message was hardly full of cheer. Essentially, we're still mired in debt, he says, and more cuts are on the way. What was hard won can be easily lost. So we have this choice in 2014. We can give up, go back to square one, risk everything, or we can confront the hard truth that more difficult decisions are needed and work through the plan that is turning Britain around. I say, let's finish the job. He claims that £25 billion worth of cuts are needed from 2015, 12 billion of which will come from the welfare budget, all because we're borrowing £100 billion a year, half of which goes on interest payments. But his suggestion that housing benefit for under 25s might be axed while pensioners would be protected brought this rebuke from his coalition partner Nick Clegg. I think they're making a monumental mistake in doing so, but they've said that the only people in society, the only section of society which will bear the burden of further fiscal consolidation are the working age poor. So his economic plan has failed and he is desperate uh, to avoid talking about the cost of living crisis that he has delivered as a result of his decision makings on his watch uh, to ordinary working people up and down our country who are on average £1,600 a year worse off under this government. But the Chancellor insists only by sticking to his plan of more austerity can there be any certainty that Britain's economy will continue to grow in 2014 and beyond. Libby Vina, ITV News, Westminster. Well, our economics editor Richard Edgar is in Birmingham. Richard, the Chancellor sounding a bit bleak today. Yes, at times surprisingly uh, downbeat. And I say surprising because many things in the economy are going in the right direction. And uh, he was talking uh, here at this company a little bit earlier today, and it's a very good example. It supplies parts to car makers like Jaguar Land Rover, which is booming. And as a result, they've just been able to open this production and distribution centre, uh, which has quadrupled its size, and they're adding 400 new staff over the next couple of years. Um, and that's reflected in the wider economy as well, which is growing and unemployment is dropping like a stone. And yet the Chancellor uh, was warning of more government cuts yet to come. He said that he doesn't want to squander what we've achieved in reducing the extra borrowing that the government is adding each year to the country's already huge debt pile. And his implication was that he would take the responsible decision while Labour would fritter it all away. Well, the, the Shadow Chancellor, um, you heard it in the package, but the Shadow Chancellor also uh, countered by this saying that they would have to make cuts. 
Um, but he, Ed Balls, wanted to focus once again on what Labour calls the cost of living crisis. So ahead of an election, we're in the peculiar position of not only the opposition criticising the flaws in the economy, but the government as well. I think the tone of this conversation may change in the months to come. Mm. Richard Edgar, thank you. Dozens of flood warnings remain, including one severe after heavy rain and gales still wreak havoc across the UK. Buildings along coastal areas have been evacuated as large waves threaten homes and businesses. Travel disruption continues up and down the country. Forecasters warn there's more of the same on the way. Sejal Karia has the details. There is simply no let up. Huge waves are already battering the coast of Devon with forecasters predicting yet more flooding and more misery. More than 100 flood warnings are now in place across the UK. On the Somerset levels, a woman and her dog were finally rescued after being trapped in their house for 13 days. They survived by living upstairs with a stockpile of food and boiling water over a coal fire. Here in Dorset, People already inundated by high waters are being urged once again to prepare for significant flooding. It's moving, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Jim Culvert's garden is meant to back onto a field. The heavy rains turned it into a lake, lapping just a few feet away from his yes, land is, and his house. Like well, all this, what you see here, right across as far as you can see to the houses over the back, is all filled. All greenery. Nice. And you even got the cows and, and all that all over the fields a lot. And the storms have wreaked havoc on the roads and railways. Along the Cumbrian coast, this station in Kirkby and Furness looked like it had a river running through it rather than railway lines. And 50 miles down the coast in Flimby, 120 yards of railway track was washed away by the sea. People are being urged to stay away from sea fronts, no matter how tempting, with waves as high as nine metres expected to hit many coastal areas and gusts of 70 miles per hour. People are being warned to be prepared. Central Caria, ITV News. We can join Martha Fairley now, who is in Dorset, where that severe flood warning is in place. How bad is it there right now, Martha? Well, the winds have certainly picked up in the last couple of hours and we've also just had a high tide. Now, the water is breaching uh, the edge of the quayside here, but so far not on the levels we've seen over the past few days. With me is Ian Parker, who's senior helm of the lifeboat at Modiford. Uh, now, Ian, how busy have you been over the last few days? Uh, we've been very busy for this time of year. We've been out every single day for the last five days uh, to various incidents. And I mean, we've seen in the background, there are wind surfers out here. It's obviously amazing conditions for them. And also people are out taking photos. Uh, it's all very dramatic. Uh, how difficult is it to, to get across to people that this is actually dangerous? Um, yeah, it's, it can be a very dangerous situation with these high seas and the large waves that are coming in. Um, we've been out to a few uh, wind surfers who have been having a good time out there, but some, some of them have been overwhelmed by the conditions. Other ones have had gear failure. And, uh, and although you know, it's very nice to come and have a look at the rough sea, you do need to be very careful because the waves are very strong and they, they create a very strong undercurrent which pulls away from the beach. So if you go out there with your pets and things like that, you need to be very careful because they can get pulled out to sea. And uh, we're being told that the flood warnings are going to continue over the next few days, so presumably uh, you'll be on standby for, for more call-outs. Yeah, we're, we're not expecting to uh, get any quieter at the moment. It's uh, with these conditions continuing, the heavy rain and the wind for us to continue. It's uh, yeah, very busy this time of year. Thank you very much, Ian. Well, uh, we're being told that residents in the area of the Lower Stour uh, should be prepared for further flooding over the rest of the week. So uh, really more of the same to continue. All right, Martha Fairley, thank you. Well, uh, let's get those people and others some advice now from Mary Donno, who became a flood consultant after her property was badly flooded. What simple steps can people take to protect their homes? Well, first of all, the most important thing, obviously, is to sign up for a free f environment agency flood warning because that will give you time to move your stuff. Mm. And it's incredibly important that you move your stuff to a safe place, especially documents and things that really can't be replaced. Yep. Um, 
then things like air bricks, just an ordinary innocuous air brick, 5,000 litres of water an what's, hour. What's an air brick? Sorry. It's, it's the ventilation on the side of the house. Right. It can let um, 5,000 litres of water an hour into your home. So either simply putting on a kite marked flood protection product or a self-closing one in preference, then that can reduce that. You can also put uh, fit a kite marked flood door onto the front of your house or better still, an ordinary looking door that you can lock and it becomes a, an immediate um, flood protection product whether you're in or not. And what about the old-fashioned use of sandbags? Because often they just don't work, do they? So you get them, you get them from the council, but the water comes in and your property's ruined. I hate sandbags with a vengeance. It's going to be written on my epitaph, ban the sandbag. They are merely a comfort blanket and they do no more than filter the water so you get cleaner flood water in your house. They don't stop it. And what about if you've been flooded more than once and you're struggling to get insurance? Because that's, it's devastating to have your property flooded and we know that the, the impact can take months to recover from. But what about if you can't get insurance? Well, actually, I haven't actually found, because I've been helping people to find insurance, if you go on the quote me, quote me quick and happy websites, they will automatically turn you down. But if you shop around on something like the British Insurers Brokers Association website um, or go to a local broker, you can normally find flood insurance. The excesses might be high, but with the government's agreement with the in ABI, the Association of British Insurers, coming into play in 2015, everybody at significant flood risk will be able to obtain insurance. So don't give up. Mary Donnay, thank you so much for all that advice. Thank it's you. My pleasure. And you can keep up to date with the weather and the latest Environment Agency warnings on our website at itv.com slash news. Well, while heavy rain and winds batter parts of the UK, temperatures in North America are expected to plummet to record-breaking lows of minus 50. It is thought more than a dozen people have died after icy snowstorms across the United States caused by dense air known as a polar vortex. Lucrezia Millerini has the latest. In the grip of the deep freeze, America's northeast is battling the elements and record low temperatures. Overnight, many states were pounded by more heavy snow, icy roads and high winds making travel treacherous. It's so cold in Chicago, residents bracing for the big chill are now calling their city Siberia. Snow and ice were blamed for this multi-vehicle pileup in Staten Island, New York. Air travel's also been hit. At JFK Airport, this plane skidded off the runway, with thousands more flights now cancelled. Airlines warning it could take days to get people to their final destinations. And today, school was out for the entire state of Minnesota. It's thought the hazardous conditions have claimed at least a dozen lives. All the result of a weather system called the polar vortex, bringing dense, cold air from the North Pole, spreading across the upper Midwest to mid-Atlantic regions. In Chicago, the advice is to stay inside if possible. Advice some are ignoring. It's wonderful. It's Chicago. you got to enjoy it. Over the next day, its forecast temperatures could reach as low as minus 51 degrees Celsius with wind chill. For many, the eye of the storm is yet to pass. Lucrezia Millerini, ITV News. And there'll be much more on the weather both here and in the United States on the ITV News at 6.30. Next, though, Jimmy Savile's victims are demanding a single inquiry into how the former DJ was able to evade justice. There are currently dozens of separate inquiries underway with different organisations, including the NHS and the BBC, all being investigated. Juliet Bremner joins me now. What exactly do victims want right now? Very simply, they want one big inquiry, or some of them do. Most of these victims will already have been asked to give their evidence or allegations, as you say, to the BBC, where Dame Janet Smith is over overtaking the, the biggest of those. There are dozens going on in the NHS hospitals and trust. 19 mm. last year announced by the health secretary and some police forces as well, where allegations were either ignored or certainly mishandled. Now, there are more than 30 at the moment, and they say what happens when all those come back at different times probably with different conclusions who's going to have a look and see what the key questions are that they raise the key failings and make sure that any findings are implemented 
What do you think the chances of it actually happening that these demands are met and they get this one umbrella, I suppose? Certainly inquiry? not any time soon. Uh, for, there are various people who say, well, do we want this anyway? The NSPCC say it could drag on for ages and ages and be very expensive. Look at the Chilcot inquiry into the, the, the Iraq war some four years down the line. We still haven't heard from them. And the government says it certainly won't be stopping those individual inquiries that are going on now. That would be abandoning them halfway through, although they haven't ruled out an inquiry uh, and they point out the fact that since the Savile scandal erupted the whole issue of child sex abuse has actually come into the spotlight anyway. Juliet Bremner, thank you. Still to come, the England coach reflects on the Ashes embarrassment. And the mature student Prince William prepares for life back at university. But first, barristers and solicitors in England and Wales walked out this morning in protest over cuts to legal aid. It is the first time in history lawyers have effectively gone on strike. They want the government to rethink plans to slash £220 million from the legal aid budget. But ministers say the current system is too expensive, with the average legal aid barrister taking home £100,000 a year. Joining me to discuss this is Nicola Hill, president of the London Criminal Courts Solicitors Association. Thank you very much for coming in, Nicola. Thank you. The legal aid bill in this country is, is very large in comparison to other countries. Why is it so big? Uh, well, that's simply not true. That's a statistic that the government point put, put out for their own benefit. In fact, there was a report from the National Audit Office in June of last year which shows that comparative spend on legal aid for the UK is average with other European and international countries. So that's simply a misrepresentation. Obviously, this is unprecedented action. Why are all these solicitors and, and barristers taking it today? Why, why do they feel that the legal aid budget as is needs to be protected? We are very, very, very concerned about the impact that this is going to have on the access to justice and the quality of justice for all. But there will still be solicitors and barristers, legal teams to represent people, won't they? We're not getting rid of those people. Well, again, this is a convenient comment that the government make. There will still be access to justice. There will, but it will be a real second-rate, second-class access. The problem is that all of the high-quality, robust solicitors will have to leave because they will not be able to provide the, the service that, we need, that, needs, that is required for um, in the defence world under the cuts and the new fee system when it's imposed. They simply won't be able to do it. They will leave. The expertise will be lost. And what will they then happen unfortunately is that the innocent will go to jail, the guilty will walk free and there's a very real danger that we return to the 1970s and the miscarriages of justice that took place then. But it won't be a situation will it where we're talking about unqualified legal teams representing people, they'll just be less experienced perhaps at the beginnings of their career rather than at the end and, and, and surely now the, the most sought after barristers are paid for and they're not doing lots of legal aid work or, or or am I wrong about that? I think that what will happen, as I say, is that when the quality solicitors leave, we will find ourselves with one or two solicitors who are not of such a high quality, uh, supervising teams of unqualified and inexperienced, effectively caseworkers, we would call them paralegals. OK, Nicola Hill, thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. The family of a policeman who was shot and blinded by the gunman Raoul Moat have said more should have been done to support him as they attended the start of the inquest into his death. PC David Rathband committed suicide two years after being attacked by Moat. The German Chancellor Angela Merkel has been injured in a skiing accident. She fractured a bone in her pelvis whilst cross-country skiing in Switzerland. Several planned visits have had to be cancelled as a result of the accident. England's cricket coach says he will stay in his position despite his side's humiliating 5-0 Ashes defeat over the weekend. Andy Flower admits, though, that there will need to be changes on the team as he tries to look to the future. Rags Martel reports. Outside edge. Gone! Australia 5-0! Whitewash complete. England beaten in all five tests. One of the worst humiliations in cricket history. But the coach says he's staying. We're not proud of that result, we're not proud of the, uh, the test series result. Uh, we've been totally outplayed and as part of our review we'll be looking at um, playing personnel and support staff. England's Ashes was a broken and spineless performance. Only one batsman scored a century. 
the pre-tour favourites thrashed in every test and no captain has ever stayed on after a whitewash. Well, hopefully I can buck that change. Um, I say I was given the vote of confidence on the board, which normally means in football terms you have two weeks and then you're on your bike. But, um, um, but you know, I'm, I'm desperate to try and turn it around. Um, I feel as if I'm the right man for the job to do it. Australia celebrate only their third whitewash victory in 131 years. As for England, they're now facing the hardest of journeys, returning home without the ashes. Rags Martel, ITV News. Finally, he is the Duke of Cambridge and for the next 10 weeks, Prince William will be studying in the university town itself. He'll be taking an agricultural management course to prepare him for taking over the Duchy of Cornwall estate. Richard Pallo is in Cambridge. Tell us more about what exactly the Prince will be doing there. Well, if you can see it through all this rain and miserable weather, this is the uh, rather unremarkable four-storey house that the Prince will be spending much of the next 10 weeks in. Uh, doing something in the region of 18 to 20 hours lectures, seminars and study groups uh, inside this building and also inside a separate college affiliated to the university of which that we've not been uh, let known. This is on a roundabout on the outskirts of Cambridge, uh, so nothing, nothing glamorous if you want about it and the course in particular is directed towards directors of companies, marketing executives, uh, that kind of thing. But for the Prince, it will be looking at agricultural management in particular. And that's something, of course, that he took a great interest in when he spent his time in Anglesey as an RAF pilot. And he took an interest in rural affairs there. And that's something that will hand, hand him in good stead when eventually he takes over the Duchy of Cornwall when his father uh, becomes king. Now, there's been much made of uh, Prince coming here to the university when his A-level grades, so some people say, are not good enough, just ABC. Most students here are triple A's. Uh, but this is a post-grad course that he is privately paying for, so it's a very big distinction. And the people I spoke to this morning, the students, were pretty excited about him coming. Oh, uh, that seems, sounds like, seems like a really good idea. I hear he's studying um, agriculture in the university, so it should be really interesting to see what um, he's going to do here. Oh, oh okay, uh, we didn't know that, actually. <laughs> Is he coming for just to, stud to study? For 10 weeks. Are you excited? 10 weeks. It's yeah. a joke. <laughs> well, he starts tomorrow, but you guess that a few students might come back early uh, to catch a glimpse. <laughs> Richard, thank you. That's it this lunchtime from everyone here for now. Bye-bye. If it's dull in Dunstable. Woo. Woo. My cheeks are glowing. Woohoo! <laughs> Seven Seas Amiga 3 range proudly sponsors the ITV National Weather. Hello to you, a very good afternoon. Well, yet more lively weather for us on the cars today. Frequent gusty showers blowing in from the west. Some prolonged intense downpours in places to give rumbles of thunder, possibly some hail. A little drier, a little brighter to the south and the east, but even so, this a brief respite because the showers will move in before the end of the day. You'll be lucky to escape the wet weather as the day goes on and to accompany those downpours. Gusty winds, particularly for the west and the southwest here, gusts of 60 to 70 miles an hour, a chance of gales and big, potentially battering dangerous waves around these coastlines all day. With yet more wet weather forecast tonight, flood alerts and warnings remain in place. Seven Seas Amiga 3 range proudly sponsors the ITV National Weather. 